What's up guys, thank you for tuning in to the channel. Uh, today we're finally gonna be giving you guys a full, in like, depth. a full what? In-depth in uh, guide on how to all-wheel drive Evo swap your Mitsubishi Eclipse. And I have Carlos and Lazy here with me today since they're the ones that basically did most of the work on this yeah. car. <laughs> this car was literally built in a garage in the span of like what, like two years? <laughs> he just leaves. <laughs> okay. Yeah, in a span of like two years or so, we initially uh, front wheel drive swapped it with a different transmission. Um, and we actually, you know, took the effort this last year to basically make it completely all wheel drive. Um, it changes the car completely. Um, and I'm basically going to be going over like the main points and questions that I'm always getting asked. Um, I do get a lot of DMs on Instagram in regards to the swap. And I just wanted to make something for you guys uh, just to look at so I don't have to keep answering everyone. Um, with the same response every time. And I had also made a how to evil swap your clips uh, for front wheel drive only. I made a video around a year ago. So if you want to do that setup instead of the all wheel drive one, since it's a little cheaper, I'll link it in a card here in one of the corners. And I'll also link the video in the description for you guys to check out. I'll also be posting my DSM tuners build thread on the description. And I'm also going to be basically pasting my whole parts list on what the car has. Uh, as far as the Evo swap for you guys to look at as well. This swap is meant specifically for the 428 chassis. This is because the motor mounts on the RS and GS models are basically on this side um, versus the GST and GSX, which has a motor mount on that side. We actually have a GST here, so we're gonna show you. Yeah, these are the 4G63 mounts. As you guys can see, this is a motor mount on this side and the transmission mounts on that side. So obviously you could still do an Evo swap on the GST or GSX, but you'll require a lot more modification for the mount. Uh, a lot more fabrication and in my opinion it's not worth it considering you already have a 4G63 in your car already and you know it's, it pretty much just has the same power potential as the Evo one so yeah I would recommend it only for 428s but if you want to do it on a GSC or GSX then it's up to you. Uh, don't listen to everything that you see online like on the forums or on the like DSM groups. Um, these people that are basically telling you you can't do it or this this and that it costs this much really have no personal experience you should obviously take the advice from the people that pretty much have done it. Uh, from what I know, uh, there's six confirmed ones worldwide and two all-wheel drive ones, yeah, right. So there's two all-wheel drive ones. Um, the, other, the other one's in Russia, but he's using Galant parts uh, for the rear, and this is actually like all Evo and Eclipse parts, so it's like a full, full Evo conversion. Anyways, I'm gonna be giving you guys a quick list on what you're going to need, and towards the end of the video, I'm actually gonna be giving you guys a full price point on what I paid for both the front wheel drive and all wheel drive setup. So make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video to know. All right, so beginning with the motor, you're going to be needing an Evo 4 to Evo 9 motor. Uh, they're all pretty much the same besides some small differences, but they fit inside your 428 chassis just fine. So as you guys can see, the 428 motor sits exactly in the same position. Um, you actually end up using the stock 428 motor mount on this side. The only thing you're gonna do is you're gonna flip it Take out this middle stud right here and it will bolt up to the engine just fine. We had to cut the transmission mount. Um, as you guys can see here, we cut up a little bit and we had to weld it up around six inches towards the front. Uh, this applies for both the front wheel drive transmission from off a of 3G Eclipse or the Evo 4 to 9 transmission for the all wheel drive setup. Um, we do have it on a rear uh, 428 motor mount attached to the Evo 8 um, transmission mount right there, as you guys can see. Uh, so it's pretty much held on by three locations. We could get like a tubular front cross member. That's pretty much for the motor mounts. The only fabrication you're gonna need is for the transmission mount. Um, if you wanna modify your front cross member, it's your choice, but we personally removed it. And you could expect to pay around $3,000 for an Evo 8 motor. Um, again, this is a motor that pretty much costs more than the car itself. So I mean, if this is too much for you, then maybe the swap isn't for you. Unfortunately, Evo parts are really expensive compared to DSM one. All right, so as far as parts, you could either go with a completely stock setup or aftermarket. Um, but if I was you, I'd just save up and just buy everything to really make the swap worth it. Uh, the car does come stock with around 290 horsepower. So adding all these bolt-ons in a tune will give you a lot more power than just the 140 horsepower in the 420A. Uh, for bolt-ons, uh, we personally chose the Gretti. Great blow valve, blow valve uh -huh. the Type S, Type S, best one. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got, got the AM, AM air, air filter. Yeah, it's AM intake. So we're gonna be going speed density too. Get rid of all this. It's gonna get rid of all that, yeah. And then we have the Megan Racing tubular manifold, which I'm planning on changing. We have the aftermarket O2 dump. We have That's some nice. Oh yeah, the ETS uh, intercooler piping matched to a 
DSM Punishment Racing Core. Uh, we did have to modify the piping a bit, right, to make it fit, but it was nothing crazy. We just had it cut a little bit. Yeah, it was nothing crazy though. Um, and of course, a Hellman boost controller, which is somewhere down there. It's still in a stock Evo 9 turbo, so after it's tuned on E85, or after it's tuned overall, it should be in the 400s or super close to it, which is just basically what I'm looking for it right now. I don't really want the car to be stupid fast. And for cooling, we do have an Evo 8 or 9 Mishimoto half rad. Um, we had to run it initially because we had we had to run a manifold spacer to clear the starter on the front wheel drive setup. Um, now that you're all wheel drive, you don't have to ha get a half radiator, but I mean, we just kept it in here just because. Um, it does keep the car cool. We have a fan in the back and in the front though. Um, and the car has not had any cooling issues as far as right now. Now getting into fuel, what we ran is a fuel lab pressure regulator. Um, FIC fuel injector clinic, uh, 1050 cc injectors, and an AM320, right? The three, 300 series, yeah. Uh, just so the car is basically tunable for E85 later down the road. Oh, and I also ran an aftermarket power steering delete. Installed uh, by yours truly? By him. Oh, by who? It was by Carlos? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no credit. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's just little minor things here and there. The rest is all pretty much aesthetics, but we'll actually be doing a full walk around video later. Um, we'll basically gonna be telling you guys all the modifications that all the cars have, so. Um, we also relocated the battery to the back, which you still have to get a tie down for. Um, and as far as fuel, um, you do not have to run this exact setup. This setup's more appropriate for like the 400 horsepower range. Uh, depending on your goals, you could run bigger or smaller injectors and fuel pumps. Um, that's pretty much what we decided to run for now. And for the wiring, uh, it initially had a custom hybrid uh, harness from an Evo and 428 car, um, and I got it made. And then I sent it to Ohm Racing, which they then replicated for a wire tuck. As you guys can see, you could barely see any wires, um, and they pretty much have it for sale to the public. So if you're gonna Evo swap your clips, uh, those are the guys to go to because they pretty much got my old harness, made basically the made a template out of it, and you can now pretty much have it for your own car without having to, you know, go through all the wiring hassle. It's all plug and play. Um, it looks super good. The company again is Ohm Racing. Um, I'll put their Instagram right here on the screen. And now we're actually gonna be going into the drivetrain. This is by far the most expensive and time-consuming part we had. Uh, this is because we had a lot of testing, a lot of mess ups, like we struggled for months with this car basically because no one has really done it before and we're just trying to figure out what works. Like me and CJ could pull this motor out. <laughs> Did we pull the motor out of this car like what, like four times like total four times. while we are testing and stuff, like, the whole axle situation, it was a pain in the butt. So hopefully when you guys do it, it's all super smooth and easy. Um, we pretty much just use this as a guinea pig car to basically find out what we need. All right, so beginning with drivetrain, you're going to be needing an Evo 4 to 9 transmission. I'm actually running an Evo 4 one match to the Evo 8 motor. As you guys can see, it's all compatible. They're all the same. They might have some differences. I'm not too sure as far as the gearing goes, but the car drives perfectly fine. I like it. I'm expect to pay anywhere from one to 2K for these. Um, like I said, Evo parts are a little bit expensive, so. And you're also going to be needing uh, the appropriate clutch and flywheel setup depending on your goals. Uh, we're currently running a competition, I guess they call it competition like stage three clutch, right? Yeah, yeah like a competition stage three clutch. Uh, for the shifter linkage situation, we're actually running some 3G um, shifter linkages and a 3G shifter base. I know you guys can't see it, but if you guys have been seeing the videos, you guys know we swapped it out. It bolts on imperfectly. The only modification you're gonna need to do is you're gonna have to move one of the shifter linkages closer to towards the chassis, um, and it should work perfectly fine. And if you're gonna be running the all-wheel drive transmission, you're gonna be needing an Evo 4, 5, or 6 transfer case. You can't run an Evo 7, 8, or 9 one because they actually sit uh, higher than the Evo 4 to 6 one and that would basically be giving you clearance issues as far as the drive shaft. And because we had to run that transfer case, we actually had to cut the 428 uh, subframe right there, the front subframe, and we went ahead and reinforced it just to make space for the um, the transfer case and drive shaft to go through it. And while we're talking about the whole transfer case and drive shaft, this car is currently running a Mitsubishi Eclipse GSX drive shaft. The only thing we did was cut it, right? We cut it towards the front, like I think around six inches. Shortened it. Shortened it, right had them weld on the Evo. Right, so they had to weld an Evo 4 to 6, uh, the little piece that connects to the to the transfer case. And to basically be able to carry that drive shaft on the car now, you're gonna be needing GSX uh, drive shaft brackets. <laughs> Kareem 
car. I actually recommend you guys just to get a donor car so you don't have to be like me, uh, searching for all the parts individually. And when you get the trash shaft brackets welded, uh, just make sure you remove your interior, including your seats and carpet, because it will burn through the chassis and you have to cause a fire. And to finish up the front part of the car, you're going to be needing Evo four to six axles. Um, we did run into the issue where the one on the passenger side was actually a little too short. So it, it popped out on us like two or three times, which we, <laughs> <laughs> which we then got extended one inch. And from ever since we did that, the car has been running great, uh, no issues. How hard are those axles to look for? <laughs> oh yeah, these axles are really hard to find considering that we're in the US. Now we're gonna be doing the rear of the car, which is I think a lot easier than the front considering that it's actually a very common swap to do on the Mitsubishi Eclipse GST. Uh, front wheel drive a lot of people just convert them to all wheel drive using a GSX donor car like I previously mentioned All this information is on DSM tuners on how to swap a GSC to GSX It's literally the same thing you're gonna have to do to your car uh, But I'm still gonna be giving you a basic rundown on what you're gonna need because there are some slight differences All right, so coming down below the car as you guys can see right in there the car is running <laughs> can you? The car is running a GSX uh, rear subframe GSX rear axles okay. Yeah, the GSX fuel tank, correct. Um, it's running the automatic uh, GSX rear differential. You need to make sure it's automatic and not manual because the automatic one is the only one that shares the same gear ratio as the Evo 4 to 6 transfer case up front. Um, as far as suspension goes, um, you should also get the GSX spindles because the 421s are different and you're going to be basically needing them to be able to run the axles in the back. And for ECU, we're actually just running a stock Evo 8 ECU. You could either run that or you could run an AEM standalone fuel system. And for the last part, you're just going to be needing um, all the extra parts. I'm talking just fluids for the oil, transmission, transfer case, differential, coolant, you know, random little parts. And you are going to be running into issues that are going to require to go buy OEM parts, aftermarket parts, random tools, uh, just to get the car ready to hit the streets. <laughs> all right, Miguel, now nice it's time for pricing. Okay, so pricing, I have a full build list right here. So I keep logs of my builds, how much I spent for the parts and what parts I buy, as you guys can see right here. This is how I'm able to basically calculate how much I spent on the swap. In the first video, I pretty much mentioned that I spent around $10,000 on just the front wheel drive setup. This is because like parts like the motor are like $3,000 and all the bolt-ons are like, they get really expensive. So it all adds up. Um, doing a complete swap like this is not something you could do with under $1,000. But I mean, it's. I think it's definitely worth it. A lot of people will tell you it's not, but I mean, I love this car. I've, I've learned so much just from like basically doing the whole swap on it with you guys, and it's been a fun journey. So to me, it was worth it. A lot of people say it won't. It won't be. Just might as well buy an Evo. But I mean, when do you really see one of these in the streets? Let alone a regular one. You don't. So just see one like this. Yeah, I think it's awesome just to keep them alive, basically. If you're adding the all-wheel drive portion, you're gonna have to spend around another like five thousand dollars above the ten. Uh, for the front wheel drive setup, uh, this is because you have to get the horror in, you have to get a, a bunch of custom pieces like the custom axles, custom drive shaft. Um, if you know how to weld and stuff like that, you'll be fine. Also, labor cost is not included because basically this car was built in a garage. Lazy Carlos and me, and we pretty much spend nothing on labor. So, besides food, <laughs> besides food, besides food and pizza, and pizza, all them pizza, pizza and, and, and all the burritos and from Taco Bell. Taco Bell. And good time. All right, guys, so that was a little technical video. I just wanted to get out for you guys just to have on the internet for anyone wanting to do the swap for the DSM platform. It's really cool to do. I'm sure it'll get easier over time once we start seeing more and more swaps come out. Uh, but it was a fun experience overall. I highly recommend it. It was definitely challenging. But I feel like it grew all three of us in such a great way as far as experience. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you stay tuned because there will be a lot more content coming out of the DSM and my Evo as well. Um, so make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.